Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Canola Producers Commission, SAS Canola, and Manitoba Canola Girl. I'm Lindsay Smith with realagriculture.com. I'm joined today by Angela Brackenreed, agronomy specialist with the Canola Council of Canada. We are in sunny Carmen, Manitoba, mm -hmm. and we're talking the importance of getting out and having a uh, really great background in scouting and agronomic skills. Put that in context for us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the whole school uh, this week, as, as you've um, talked about, has uh, been focused around technologies and how to use them to aid you with scouting. Uh, what we're doing in the afternoon is saying, you know, these technologies are excellent tools and, and they really can help you, but you need to have that ability to ground truth and you need to have that agronomic background as well as field history to, to really properly use those tools. So what are we standing in front of? To walk us through what uh, you've been putting participants of the Crop Diagnostic School through. Okay, so, so it's a whole scouting exercise. What they have are some aerial images that the UAV um, took over, over the summer. Um, so you can see pretty obvious points in, in those aerial photos where there's some strange things going on in the field. So the participants come out here um, and we kind of cheat a bit. We go right to them because we just have limited time. Um, but, but we're here to, to ground truth and, and uh, go through the process of elimination of you know what could these um, spots potentially be. So in front of me is, is, as you can see, a really nice looking crop of canola. Um, directly to the left of me is something that looks a little bit unusual that the UAV um, did pick up and, and participants you know, really quickly went to this spot because they could see it in, in those aerial photos. And so what went on here? This is actually an area of low fertility and um, you know after we went through some of that background information that's so important you know the soil test uh, results, the plant tissue tests, uh, participants were, were quite quick to, to pick that out and there's some obvious um, nitrogen deficiency symptoms showing up there. So we also have some spots where the NDVI showed that there's a lower uh, vegetative material there. Um, so participants went right to those spots to see what was going on. Turns out it was cutworm damage. So um, some of those things are, are really great to see as it can help you with um, informed decisions as far as what is that actual stand reduction. When you're just standing right in the field, it can uh, look like a lot, but from, from overhead, it really gives a good um, perspective as to that overall damage in the field. Okay, Angela, so we're at a bit of a different spot here. What are we looking at? Well, um, so throughout this whole session, actually, Ingrid Christensen, the, the farm, production in, uh, farm production advisor in Morris, and Anastasia Kubinik, the oilseed specialist um, here in Carmen, did some things to, to simulate what you might see in, you know, in an actual field, in producers' fields throughout the province. So what they wanted to see here was a drift scenario. Um, so they sent the, the young summer students out to do this, and unfortunately it was on a day when we had no wind. Um, so the girls were kind of put in a tough situation. So it doesn't exactly look like what you, you might see from a drift scenario, but the symptoms are very um, classic phenoxy symptoms. Um, and as Ingrid has alluded to many times in our session, uh, she's seen a lot of phenoxy drifts over the years with uh, that being a spray of choice on, on a lot of wheat crops. So this is something that producers would uh, often see in their canola. Uh, next year or years if we do this uh, scouting exercise again, something that we may try and do is a, a glyphosate drift. With the increase of, of Roundup Ready crops such as soybeans and corn, there is more prevalence of glyphosate drifts. So, uh, you know, this is the first time we've ever done this and we're all kind of learning as we go uh, so we're hoping that participants will kind of give us some tips and how we can improve this scouting exercise for the future. Now uh, for farmers who you know might be using things like NDVI or a UAV and getting some of these images um, where do you like if they're starting to see th things that they don't maybe they're not sure what's causing it or whatever what sort of information would you love them to have to bring back to you to pose a question. So what sort of histories or... Oh, well, I mean, uh, to me, the key in any diagnosis is getting as much information as possible. So there's never too too much information. And I think a lot of times producers think, oh, well, that's not important. Uh, that You know, this doesn't matter. But like, if you can go back, you know, at least four years in, in that field's history and come up with, you know, the, the fertility regime, um, the herbicide regime, the, the crops, everything like that is, is really helpful um, in coming to a diagnosis. 
One other thing that uh, we've talked about a lot in the school is is looking at macro patterns of, of damage symptoms and, and just strange symptoms in the field. Um, you know, that, that can be super helpful in, in understanding what's going on. And you're seeing things like, you know, extreme damage on, on the headland and then it tapers off. Well, that's kind of a classic drift symptom. If you're seeing parallel straight lines, probably not caused by a natural pest, probably more of a mechanical type problem. Great, okay, thanks so much. Thanks, Lindsay.